endpoint, you can push and pull data out of a calendar, a spreadsheet, things like that. So we allow for you to get data in and out of apps uh, in a lot of ways, and then also build extensions. So if there's a functionality missing in apps, for instance, we don't have out of out of box mail merge functionality, you can build it in apps. So App Script uh, is the technology that I'll be using to demonstrate some of the telephony integration points. Uh, but I think it's kind of important to set up what is possible and what the environment is like. So I'll take like five minutes to kind of quickly swing through what App Script's about, uh, give a little bit of a demo of what you can do with it. Um, one of the nice things about it is everything that I'll be doing is something that you can do on any computer with internet connection. Um, so uh, it's actually really easy to get started and kind of have fun with, I think. Um, even so, Windows? Even Windows. <laughs> um, as long as it's not E9 and above. <laughs> you got that? Not cool. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, so that's one of the nice things about the, the platform that I work on is uh, that it's very accessible. So that's kind of how you get a hold of me um, on Google Plus and on Twitter. I'm not allowed to be on Facebook. Not You're not allowed to. That's not true. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad joke. I got to say. I want to get caught. I'm going to get caught. Uh, some press. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So I'll just take uh, a few minutes to kind of explore after real quick, and then we'll dive into some of the Twilio and the Luffy integration aspects of things. Because I think that's what is probably going to be most important for you guys. Cool. I'm usually used to like walking around when I'm, I'm standing <laughs> and <laughs> cramming up against the wall. Yeah, it's actually like, uh, feel very relaxed. Um, so the, this is sort of a technical introduction to what AppScript is, which is great. I think you guys are all developers, so I think that's what's the most important, interesting aspect of things. So remember the three things about AppScript as I'm demoing and as I'm showing things. Um, Google AppScript is meant to automate tasks, integrate, and extend Google products and third-party services. So we do this by being, number one, a JavaScript runtime in the cloud. So this is server-side JavaScript. So this is pure JavaScript, not some version of JavaScript that works specifically on Google products. You can copy-paste your non-UI-related JavaScript and it'll just run. So underscore JS and other node libraries that you may be using are all applicable and available here. You can debug them. It's actually super fast. Um, uh, the, the, the server that we use underneath the covers is Rhino. Um, it's editor in the browser, so you can actually write the code in the browser, and it's actually, uh, if you guys are familiar with Code Mirror, that's what we use as the underlying code editor. And you don't have to install the clips and manage SDKs and libraries and class paths and all that stuff. We take care of all of it. It's actually a really nice editor, I think, um, that we see. And the third thing that makes it uniquely Google is a set of APIs and hooks to the Google products. So we can call an event when a Google form is submitted. We can uh, allow you to run every five minutes to check an email inbox. We take care of security, the distribution mechanisms, and so on. So the, the part of number three is kind of what makes it specifically Google, but number one and two allows you to build sort of any generic JavaScript app uh, that you can run on the Google servers. And in a lot of cases, it's for free. So what are some of the capabilities? So I mentioned the num bullet number three, which is that it can extend Google products, but then also it does that by being able to communicate and display UI. So you can actually render some HTML, connect databases, connect to soap services, you can make outbound calls using URL fetch, which if you've used App Engine, some of these metaphors will actually look pretty familiar, but it's actually not related to App Engine at all. It's very different. App Engine allows you to build something from the ground up. You have full control of the infrastructure. With App Script, you're kind of working within the context of Google Apps for the most part. And then it comes with batteries included, so you can actually write a legitimate program that has caching, locking, be able to store things, and properties, and all sorts of stuff like that. Okay? Um, so it started out in 2009 when it was just within spreadsheets. So this was the way you wrote custom functions in spreadsheets. So if you wanted to have a custom calculation for inches to millimeters, which is not one of the built-in functions that we give you, like sum and max and min and all that stuff, average and all that stuff. So that's how it started out. But then throughout the years, we've actually broken it out and it's a standalone thing. So if you can go, if you, if you can, um, uh, the one URL that you want to remember is script.google.com or google.com slash script. And that'll take you right to the editor. 
and you can actually spread a standalone code base rather than having to go to a spreadsheet and pretty tied to it. And we added a lot of things along the way, and uh, we don't really do a lot of roadmap stuff, but 2013 is going to be a pretty big year as well, and um, at Google I.O. we'll be hoping to show a lot of things there. I didn't um, get the tickets. I didn't get the tickets. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> you and 30,000 other people. Oh, no, like 45 minutes. minutes. Yeah, it's okay. unfortunate. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's a tough... Uh, how big is it? How many people? Huh? How many people attend, or how many tickets? It's about 4,000 people attend. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's a, I was actually lucky enough to go last year as an attendee, yeah. and wow. you get a lot more swag as, yeah, the is, yeah. as, well. as a Googler, you don't really get anything special <laughs> for the day. So, uh, so, so back in like 2009, 2010, was, was this, so I mean, 2009, obviously the, the, the genesis for this was in spreadsheets, but was it public facing in 2010? Yeah, so in 2009, I think it was public facing to just to enterprise customers. So you had, to be, uh, you had to be a Google Apps paying customer, which was 50 bucks a user a year, which allowed you to have Gmail for your domain and all that stuff. So we kind of started out, you know, that, in typical Google fashion, we kind of start out either invite only or a small population to ensure that it's legit, and then we'll roll it out to the wider population. Then we do like the 0.1, 1, 10, 100% type of lives. Uh, that's typically our uh, MO. And um, so that's kind of what we did. And then 2010, it became available publicly to everyone. If you had a Gmail account, you could write a script and run a script. And then that continues to be the case. Um, so what does a typical script look like? And this is kind of a very simple script. This is JavaScript. This is straightforward JavaScript. And anyone that's done any programming in JavaScript or Java or any, really any language that um, the small talk syntax inspired, this will look very familiar. So what this is going to do is take a value from the spreadsheet, turn it into a static map, and then send an email with the link to that map. So when you think about it, this is kind of a mashup, right? Which is when you're pretty exciting that you're able to write four lines of code and mash up three different Google services. Spreadsheets, maps, and Gmail, right? So without having to register API keys, without having to set up authentication and make REST calls and all that stuff, that's really the big power of App Script is to be able to write code like that and then be able to do that along with your party planning tools. So I'm having a dinner party, and then for each of my guests, I'm going to send an email with a personalized direction saying, um, hey, Arun, you're arriving directions from your home to my place is this. So you can kind of write those kind of automated tools. A lot of different use cases. I want to read this off to you, but enterprise has a huge uh, set of things that this can do. Um, this can um, power uh, integration glue. So we have a ability called external APIs. Salesforce and Twitter, and this integration Google capability is what I'm going to show with Twilio. It's not listed there, but that's what I'll be showing you. And uh, a lot of things. Um, a lot of use cases, being able to take, this is Google Forms. So Google Forms come in, and you're able to run a grading script that goes through all the different responses in the spreadsheet and then creates a histogram and grades different student scores, all with a simple script. And the script is called Fluberu, and you can find it in the script gallery pretty easily. Uh, mail merge, so people write lots of different mail merge implementations with Google Apps scripts. This is the vacation calendar use case, where instead of having a different event for everybody that's out on vacation or reporting sick, there's a system that creates one event every day, and if you click on it, you'll see who's on, out of sick that day. So a lot of different ways to kind of inject your application logic and business information in different parts of the applications that people are already using. So that's really kind of the background that I wanted to give because I think without that, a lot of what I'll talk about will be pretty confusing. Uh, so if there's one URL that you'll remember for, from today, it's script.google.com. And it's super easy to get started, and uh, there's actually a couple of different things that we'll show. There's ways to have a spreadsheet and a script paired up, and that's a spreadsheet bound script. And Google Sites has an ability to do uh, uh, scripts as well. So we have a lot of ways you can get in touch with us. We have a developer site, we have a YouTube Google channel. We're actually doing office hours on Wednesday, so you can find us there live. And uh, you know, we have a blog as well, as you can imagine. And if you have questions, we're on Stack Overflow. Is there a particular app you've seen or something really clever that's been done that stood out in your mind that you remember, like a particular anecdote? So do it. I mean, there's a lot of sort of different use cases. So people have written invoicing applications. 
So you take a Google Doc template and then you take um, names that you punch into a web app and then they're able to generate a PDF from it and then send it via email. So I could do something similar like that to use, uh, so uh, Google, uh, I don't want to say Google, or spreadsheets, Google spreadsheets. Yeah, right? spreadsheets. So yeah. there's um, there's a graphing capability, right? Yeah. Like bar graphs. Or, so I could use that, I could leverage that in some, so if I'm taking names or uh, it's hacked on a yeah. capture number of Ruby developers. In fact, we do that a lot uh, yeah. for internally when we organize events. We do, so we say the the maximum number of attendees for this event is 50. Yeah. We have everybody registered. And then we, we when when it hits the limit, we auto respond to people that register after that limit, saying, "Hey, you've been waitlisted." Okay. And then when people RSVP and change them from yes to no, we let them in, and then we bump it up. So all that gets written in this spreadsheet, and then we have a script that kind of manages that workflow. Okay. So uh, in fact, that's one of the tutorials that we have on our website. Oh, um, no, right. right. Google.com slash apps dash script, and then if you go to our tutorials. It's like the event. Uh, or maybe it's under case studies. Uh, it's somewhere in here, one of these things. There it is. Um, event location, no, that's not it. Of course, which one of these things, and as you look, look through them, uh, they'll kind of showcase what's possible and uh, all the things around it. Okay? All right, so uh, what I'll do is really quickly kind of showcase a couple of demos that are just standard app script demos that I'll just build live dynamically so you get a sense for how it works. And then we'll do some things around Twilio that uses the API. Um, so I'll go and open up a, a simple, uh, start with my Gmail interface. So this is a test account that I have. We're going to fix this um, at gmail.com. Bunch of emails and stuff like that here. Uh, okay, so this is my test account. So what I'm going to do is start with automating some things around yeah. Gmail. Because I think, you know, with over 500 million users, it's probably one of the bigger systems that Google has, and everybody has a Gmail account. When you first go to script.google.com, here's a screen that you're welcome by. And this is sort of a starter code and um, starter welcome screen. I really like this because, uh, you know, you don't have to use it. You can hit close and it'll go away. But when you click on one of these templates, it, it sort of seeds your editor with a lot of code that is useful and it's not really a template but it's sort of a helper if you can think about it that way. Um, and all this code, if you kind of uh, have done any programming, will look very familiar and comfortable. Um, if you use the tutorials, they'll take you to a different screen altogether and we're working on cleaning that up. Um, it's only this create the script for or sort of the templates. Okay, and if you have a lot of recent projects, they'll accumulate here. Um, so you can see that this is a full-fledged code editor. You have your toolbar up top, you have your file list on the left, the line numbers, syntax highlighting, um, you know, pretty robust uh, set of editing capabilities that you have here. Uh, for my demo, I'm not going to use any of this code. I just wanted to show you that it's useful to get started this way. And if you can think about just create event, and anyone that's done any programming will know what this does. You don't even have to look at the API docs for what you don't know what that. This creates a calendar in your Google Calendar. I'll delete that. So the, I'll give it, uh, we'll call this telephony Gmail demo. Give it a project name. It saves that. Uh, the GS stands for Google Apps Script. And let's say function read emails. Okay. Then I'll say var threads equal to gmail app dot. So one of the big things that's actually pretty impressive is autocomplete in JavaScript within a browser. So that's actually quite useful. Because um, I don't memorize APIs, I kind of browse with them as they go along. I'm going to just say get inbox thread. If you have a lot of emails in your inbox, you want to use the uh, ones that limits the number um, instead of getting them all. So I'm just in the test inbox, so I'll just do get everything. And I'll say four bar i in threads. And you can see that it's actually matching brackets and doing some annotation, that line numbers are pretty useful. What I'll say is bar message equal to threads, get i in it. And this autocomplete is actually quite impressive when you think about it. It's actually able to look at a collection and figure out what type of class is in there and then be able to do the autocomplete on that. That's actually 
you know, when you think about how impressive that is, that's like what Eclipse and Visual Studio can do, all of this in a browser on a dynamically typed language like JavaScript. So here I'll say get first message subject, and then I'll just say logger.log and message. Okay? So when I run this, um, it's actually pretty simple. Save it. My internet. Um, and I'll hit tab and clean that up. So seven lines of code, um, and I can hit this play button. The first thing it's going to do is make me authorize the script. So when you run a script, it's running on the Google data centers, you need to give it some identity. And when you run it from the code editor, it has to be the developer's identity. So I'll authorize it. So it's, think of a script as essentially a, a robot that runs asynchronous or uh, on behalf of someone. So when I run this, uh, nothing happened because we didn't do anything other than logger.log. Logger.log is sort of like console.log in browser terminology. If I go to view logs, you can see that these are all the email from my inbox. So it's actually, uh, we're able to read emails pretty easily. So no other API uh, will allow you to read Gmail messages for yourself or anyone that's running this this easily. Uh, so that's actually pretty powerful. So let's take it to the next level. Let's kind of add some layers of complexity here. Can, can I ask a question? Yeah. Again, it's a little bit off topic, but um, first off, this is awesome. Like I've never used it before, and it's really compelling. I can see how I could use it for something fast, like that I don't want to get done, right? Right. So the more, just to give you one context of why people use this in Gmail. The, uh, a very popular script is Gmail Snooze. So you get an email, it, it says something like, fill out your tax form for April 15th. Right. Well, it's February. You don't really care about it for two months, right. and you can just put a label on it, and then a script will run every hour, and then move that off your inbox. And then resurface it when it's time. Right. So you can write some email automation, get things done, type in workflows um, through AppStream. But sorry, I interrupted you. No, 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 no. I guess the question I was going with is what is like, uh, if you had this kind of convey, what is the typical developer you're seeing? Is it some hacker guy who's just making something convenient like that? Or is it, are you seeing like a lot of business users? Yeah, so or? there's actually people building businesses on this. So Gmail Meter, I think I got it right. So these guys wrote a script. I think it's free, but you know they're definitely looking to find a way to monetize it. Um, it's a company here in New York, Shuttle Cloud. Um, they wrote an app that you install it, and then it monitors your inbox for you, and then gives you statistics like this for you. All right, so it's pretty pretty useful. Um, it's not, you know, obviously if you don't uh, really care for this type of data, it's not that exciting, but uh, I find it pretty useful. So. Uh, so that's one, right? So businesses building products with apps, app script. Uh, then you have the sort of the individual hacker guy building something to use for himself. And then there are companies that are doing monitoring of inboxes that are saying every 30 days, delete all automated emails. So you got like a bill of failure email and stuff like that, just to kind of monitor inbox size because you're paying for that, right? Um, so it sort of expands the gamut, um, and it's only been a couple of years that this has been really available to everybody. So we're trying to figure out you know, what are people doing with it. And right now, I kind of say, if you're doing anything with Gmail, anything with apps, and you're thinking about writing some automation or some integration, start with app scripts first. Mm -hmm. You may, if, if you're, you know, if you need app engine type. Uh, infrastructure, then and there's some APIs there. It's not the same APIs. You can't read Gmail as easily from App Engine, mm -hmm. but that may be the way to go. Mm -hmm. But we, I kind of recommend people to kind of start thinking from this this angle. Um, and it works. Sorry, this is a dumb question, but it works with Google Forms. You mentioned. Yeah. Okay. So um, Google Forms, you can kind of tap in and come to events. Right. So any new submission from Forms can run a piece of code. Right. App Engine, you have to use Java, right, or, or the, your, your language. Or Python, yes. It's different. App Engine is extremely um, separate, a very separate thing. So. Would, do you think to smooth the transition, you can introduce JavaScript for App Engine as well? Um, I, it's very different. I mean, we're not really trying to facilitate transition. Um, you know, it's sort of binary at this point. Alright, so let's do something pretty interesting with this, which is write it to a Google Doc. 
salsa var doc equal to document app dot create. You can see that uh, there's some pattern here. Uh, you it up, and you can see that it's document app gmail. You kind of start to see some patterns, right? And instead sort of blogger dot log, what I'm going to do is say doc dot append paragraph and that's the message. Okay. So now when I run this. It's smart, it realizes that I've snuck in a new service, which is documents. I only previously authorized Gmail, so it's gonna make me authorize again. So I'll authorize it. This authorization flow requires a couple of clicks, so we're trying to improve that and be uh, better about it. So I'll go to my drive at this point, um, and that's my drive. You can see that there's the, the Gmail demo that I did, uh, the project that I created. I'm gonna run this, and then if the, demo gods are with us, there's a new document that popped up. I click on it. This is a document with my Gmail doc, uh, messages in it. So that's how easy it was to create a document and then populate things from Gmail into it. Can we'll you take this one level further? Go ahead. Can you automate to export it to PDF? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And you can say doc.getAs and then you can say application slash PDF. Hmm. What other format, file formats are there? Uh, check the documentation, you can get it as Word, you can get it as uh, text, you can get it as uh, a few different types, yeah, check the mm -hmm. documentation. Um, so we'll take this a step further now. So instead of just writing it, we'll just say message equal to language app dot translate. We'll take message, translate it from, forget the documentation here, I think it's, this is uh, yeah. For, uh, for server. Source language, okay, source language. And I'll say message EN to ES, okay? So converting it from English to Spanish. But I'm not going to create a new document, I'm going to write to the existing document. I'm going to copy this URL, I'll say document app dot open by URL, put that URL in, and then go ahead and clean this up, and I'm going to run this. Come back here, and It'll just kind of heads off and then it'll just populate it. So that was a separate account running on the servers, running through my code, and then since everything is in the cloud, it just boom popped up, right? I didn't have to save it, I didn't have to reload it. It's just true multi-editor collaborative editing. Okay? And this is in Spanish, right? So when you think about a mashup, uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't get much more uh, succinct than this for a pretty common nine lines of code including braces. Uh, and it's very legible, right? So open a document, get inbox thread. For every thread, get the subject of the first message, translate it, and then write it to the doc that we opened, right? Um, pretty straightforward and easy to use. But it doesn't stop there, right? The editor itself is actually pretty robust too. So what I can do is actually put a breakpoint there and then run it in the debugger. So this is actually the, the really exciting part because this code is running on the Google data centers and you're able to pause it. And then you're able to say, go over it. I want to now look at the message. So you can see that it's the message in English. And then the next line should have the message in Spanish. Right? So when you're writing something pretty complicated, this comes in really handy. And I didn't have to install anything. I can literally go on any document, any browser, I should say, and then be able to do it. A um, couple other things that are useful here is that you can schedule this. This is kind of a, not a great use case to read emails and write it to a document, but I can set up a trigger to run every hour and then do this function. If I have multiple functions, it will do that, but in this case, just one function. Uh, so that's what I'm just doing. All right, so I can say, and you don't have to be cognizant of the time limits. You get about an hour of execution a day. It is a free resource and we're trying to share it with everybody else in the world. And then your script can't take more than five minutes at a time to run. So just be kind of careful about all these things. <laughs> could you, could you pay Most scripts, um, Yeah, so there's a few things that you can bump up by paying. So you go to developer.cool.com. Uh, uh, Quota, is that page? There you go. No. We're working on publishing that. Uh, uh, my dashboard. Uh, there you go. There's, uh, the quotas are listed here. So if you are a paying enterprise customer, 
kind of so if you Google Apps for Business has a lot more quota for a lot of things. Not just activity, but then total execution time, um, so triggers, number of triggers you can have, so you can have six hours a day, huh? JDBC. Yeah, so we allow you to connect to databases. Uh, uh, external databases? External databases on SQL Azure, mm -hmm. AWS, whatever, or even in your MySQL databases. And also Google Cloud SQL. So we have our own MySQL instance as well. That's so you can dump um, information to external databases. That's right, that? yeah. That's right. I mean, when you think about it, calling Salesforce and Twitter is the same thing, right? But in this database world, it's much more, I understand that it's different. Um, cool, so that's the document that we populated. We talked about triggers. Uh, but I think that's kind of enough about just kind of app script um, side of things. So what I'll do now is kind of pop into the, the Twilio side of things and what, what we can do here. Connect to Google Voice as well? Uh, Google Voice doesn't have an API. Ah. Uh, at this point, so there's no integration. Or, they're, yeah, they're telephony, right? Yeah. Does anyone need a beer before we dive into Twilio stuff? Uh, I'll take one. Harpoon? Harpoon, please, yeah. Harpoon is here in Canada. Uh, oh, okay. Harpoon. Harpoon. Yeah. Sure. Harpoon. Yeah. Harpoon. Yeah. Harpoon. Yeah. Harpoon. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
they changed the API a little bit. Uh, but they have this thing called Twimmel, which is something that you can uh, invoke when a phone call comes in, which we won't show today. But you're able to initiate calls at least by just posting some information to their services. So we'll be doing both things. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is um, just kind of set the stage to what's possible is to have a very simple service. It's um, if you've done any sort of servlet or Java, this interface will make sense. So it's called do get. Do get is basically the function that gets called when you publish it as a web app. So you go to publish, publish as a web app, pick the version you want to publish, the authority you want to run under, um, and then you are able to return data. So this, what this does is it creates a content service which takes the parameter body of the SMS, translates it, and then emails, uh, texts it back. Right, so it returns that text. Uh, the mime type is important because otherwise the uh, Twilio will not know what's going on. So to kind of demonstrate this, I have a voice account here that I'm going to text from. And then I'll go here, and you guys can try this as well. <clears throat> you have your cell phones on you. Text anything uh, in English to this number, 224-677-3902. And then I'll try that as well. And I'll say, hello world. I'll send it. And then I should now get an inbox message back. Demo browser with me. What else? Nothing? Well, can I get a response back? Refresh. Close. Get message. So let's say file. Just make sure I deploy the right version. It's not really good at that zoom level. <coughs> Oh, I need to deploy it, that's fine. So when you, whenever you change the code uh, for a web app, you do have to version it, because otherwise we don't know if it's a live copy you're working on or some snapshot. So I forgot to do that at time. So let's try that again. So I'll say text to that number. Um, text to that number, I'll say hello world. Send that. Fresh, and I got something back in Spanish right there. Hola mundo. They don't speak Spanish. You can verify that. <laughs> uh, but that's just doing a very simple um, translation using this API, right? So language app that translate, and you can do ticker lookups. You can do all sorts of stuff, right? So we actually have a finance app. Finance app. Dot get stock info. Um, for the stock you text in. Oh, they didn't shut it down like they said they would. The finance? What's that? It's available through here. Oh, the, um, but not like externally. Da, da, da. Close yesterday, let's just say. Um, G O O G. What's that? G O O G. Well, we'll actually text in something, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll say uh, instead of um, just say return, copy this guy. Oop. Comment this out for now. And instead of let's just take this, save this file, and versions, save, and then publish the new version. 18. As you can see, I've used the same project a long time. And then come back here, and then I'll say text. Uh, text this number. G O G. G, and then it should now say 810 today. Hmm. Then you can say text and same thing. MSFT. What's that? MSFT. Oh. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it'll respond back with that 28.5. Right? So we get the idea of what's possible. And this is, we're texting a service that's built entirely in Google Apps Script, and it didn't cost me much, right? Uh, cost me anything, really. The text, you paid for the one sent to the message, but as long as you're using it for personal purposes, these are 
great examples. And then if you start hitting it thousands of messages a day, then you have to think about quota and things like that for app script. Um, okay? So let's take this to the next level a little bit and then do some integration. So you know, we're not doing much integration with Google Apps itself. We're just returning things back, echoing it back and some data, right? Um, so what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll pull in some other CAN code I had because it's pretty easy to do. Uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, have the spreadsheet and uh, I'm going to have you guys take your phones out and then do a poll. Okay. Just pull your safe, your favorite um, superheroes <laughs> and versions, and you can vote multiple times. You can cheat. Um, in fact, since we have only a few people, we'll just have have everybody do multiple votes. Um, and I'll show the code and how how you can read that in a second. But um, who wants to text in? Right? Was that yeah? That's so I'll show you the number. Please have a slide deck that I can read it. So take that number. 224-677-3902. And then just text in the letter A, B, or C. Just three letters. Just one letter, nothing else. And you can get short codes from Twilio too, which is a little bit more expensive, like four digit code or something. But you know, obviously 10 digit numbers are a lot cheaper, so I just use it for demos. Same code applies for both. So A, B, or C, right? Everybody got that? Um, and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go open the spreadsheet where your inputs are all going in. So what I'm gonna do is go in here and then say tools, uh, data, pivot table report, add fields, parse vote, values, parse vote, count A, okay? And then I'm gonna take this guy and then create a chart of this and as you guys are voting this will update this will update so I will join in on that fun and so you can actually have this sort of live you know we built a polling system in just a, a couple of minutes right so is it, is it actually updating can you vote more than once yeah, yeah update sure. it. go for it you can cheat yeah, so you can see that kind of flipping, right? Like mm -hmm. the wheel is spinning. Batman rocks. Um, and that was just, you know, it doesn't take, like, you don't have to be American Idol to build that, right? <laughs> so, uh, and that's a really kind of visual chart that you can put up in front of a classroom or a conference. And, and if you're trying to fundraise or something like that, having this sort of gamification and live feedback is super valuable, right? Mm. Um, so that's, that's, that's what I kind of wanted to show from this standpoint of, having SMS come in. In this case, it's not responding. Uh, it's just collecting the data and writing it in a spreadsheet. And, and you can uh, save the spreadsheet, obviously. I don't have to, right? It's all cloud system, right? So, uh, so this spreadsheet's not even shared with everybody. I think it's only me, right? So the only person in the world that can access this is me. I just have the script running as me, so it can access this and write. And the only code that I have in the spreadsheet is to write, the, the script is to write. Right. So this data is mine. Uh, I don't have to share it with anybody. I can. You know, and, and every day, like 24 hours, I could write or have a script running in the background. It does a job. It emails me a PDF of. This. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. To um, to so enforce like one vote, I mean, yeah, one vote per phone, you just do a, like a search for the whole thing. Like, yeah, you can store a little um, hash of all the already submitted numbers. If you've already submitted it, you can either write our business logic that says swap out previous vote or block. You vote, right? You can decide all that stuff. That's just for a at that point. So, quick question. So, yeah. in this case, uh, Trilio is giving, uh, so that number, the 227 is your number, right? Is your Trilio number. Yeah, so, so I paid for that at Twilio, yeah. So, um, I'm sending a message to that number, and then Trilio is sending it to a URL to your script URL. That's exactly right, yeah. So, you so decide what happens. So, go ahead, sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, um, so, can I do this directly to your Google Voice number, if you had one? Um, so, you'd have to port that number from Google Voice, or somehow, it needs to end up in Twilio, right? Oh. Only Twilio can go to you are, oh, or okay. some other service, Telio, oh. DI, oh. uh, whoever. Right? Oh, okay. So, you okay. need something that can invoke this exactly. URL this with the parameters of the, who sent it, it's, it's, you know, yeah. Yeah. message. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it's a Google Voice number. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if they can. There might be a way to import it into Twilio or Telio. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not a familiar, uh, I'm, not, I'm not an expert with Twilio, I'm somewhat familiar with it for the most part, but uh, yeah, it is cool. Cool. Um, so you just kind of take a look at what's going on, the code is actually super simple. Um, it takes it, it has a spreadsheet ID that's hard coded, and even if you copy this down, you can't access this, right? This is only I logged in as my Gmail account can access it. And then it looks for from and body from the incoming text message, and then it just does a basic sanity check. Um, enough people have tried to like break it, so I've added a default of other. <laughs> Uh, and uh, that's it. So a very simple logic to kind of protect this. And then I just append it to the, <coughs> append it to the spreadsheet. I write the date, who sent it, what they actually texted it, and what I'm going to make it out to be. Right? Vote and parse vote. And then I'm going to return nothing. And if you return nothing, so it doesn't charge for the outgoing text message. So I saved myself a penny. What was the, what was the scratch GS again? That's just my sort of copy paste. Oh, okay. I, so Ignore that, yeah. Can this, what about with like libraries, like different, so there's a Twilio JavaScript library. Let's say I want to use that with Google Apps, right? is that possible? Um, I don't, so I don't know what they're trying to do with their JavaScript library. If they're trying to do like phone calls and stuff like that from a web page, yeah. that would not work. If all is trying to facilitate parsing of messages and stuff like that, it would work, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, go ahead. Uh, so does Twilio fill in the uh, headers for the, the get request? I mean, it's obviously yeah, so if you go here, uh, they actually said a bunch of things. Um, they said like, if they're able to determine the uh, your city state zip, they'll actually geocode that as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not using any of that uh, based on your phone number, but they said these things in the from request, the, the get request. Okay. Yeah, that's right. And I think I can ask it to do it as a post, so I can actually change it to a post if I wanted to. Get is a little easier. Uh, actually, no, this doesn't really matter. So if they, they do a post, I just need to change it to say do post. And the same code will work. So we support both gets and posts for it. Is there one that can do, like, can handle both? Like, you know, in the PHP, they said request? Yeah, it's not possible. You have to write either do get or do post. So you, you just write two functions, right? The yeah, you just write the functions and, and then pass it back and forth. Oh, okay. you can refactor the content of this function out. That's right. Yeah. Um, cool. So let's take a look at the spreadsheet itself. And while you guys were texting, all I did was create a pivot table in the chart. Everything was from scratch, right? Like it's that easy to do that with spreadsheets. Uh, and this is all online. I just opened the same spreadsheet from another computer, and this data is available. And if you guys don't mind me quickly flashing your phone numbers, these are what you guys were texting. Uh, someone will, and this is me screwing up and not publishing the old copy and your translation stuff is going in here. That's why there are the other ones. Um, and that's it. So that's, that's the real simple version of the code, right? It's taking this and then turning it into something a little bit more useful. And I can change the title and I can publish it. Um, right? Favorite superhero. And I can actually write code to generate this uh, spreadsheet to this, this chart as well. That's, that's a picture file? Uh, no, as a chart. Oh, you want to just save it as a picture? I think that's way too yeah, It's not, probably SVG. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a way to get it as a PNG or something. You can request the contents of the back. Okay, so what have we seen so far, right? So we've seen uh, this, all right? You guys send in uh, a text to a Twilio number. That calls a spreadsheet. Sorry, that calls a script which writes into the spreadsheet. I am the owner of the spreadsheet. I add a chart to it, and then a few other people are monitoring that. I mean, this happens to be the same people here, but then this should be different people and whatnot. And then this sort of gray box is the Google ecosystem. Right, so it sort of shows you that, um, how it comes in and out of it. And this is the SMS integration story. And the same thing would work with TeleAPI or anyone else has an API. Um, and there's no magic. Uh, in the do get post. Let's do something that's a little bit different, right? Uh, which is making an outbound phone call. And uh, in this example, we're gonna, what we're going to do is have a spreadsheet that has a bunch of call log information. And then when I hit run, it's going to call, run a script which makes an outbound call, in this case, to Twilio, with the phone number and a message. And then that's going to call a person. And then um, the way it's going to work is actually twofold. So number two and number three. So 
the service says, hey, Twilio, make a call. And Twilio says, OK, what's the content? So that's kind of how it works. You don't just post up a document. Uh, so you need to actually post what's called the Twimmel document. I don't know how you say it. I say Twimmel. Maybe it's T-W-I-M-L. I don't know. Uh, but that's basically the markup language. So we'll see this in action as well. So I'll go to this use case here. And the idea is that uh, you're a principal and you want to call a, you know, all your parents that were, I'll just copy paste this. Um, you want to you know, go down a list of all the kids that were tardy or some like school closure notice or something like that. Essentially, this is a robocall, right? Build in a spreadsheet, you can have a form fill this in. Super easy to enter things into a spreadsheet and you can automate it. I have a button and one of the things you can do is assign a script to a button. This will run this function called read rows. And then you can go to tools script editor to see the code behind it. It's actually pretty straightforward code. So it's going to read the spreadsheet and then for each row, and for now I'm just going to do the first row, make a phone call. And make a phone call is going to do um, you know, call out the URL where it says it's going to make a call to Twilio, uh, uh, Twilio API and then also have a do get which will get the message and return this uh, markup, the tunnel, right? Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to publish this. So you pre-made the MP3 or whatever? Uh, no, I didn't pre-make. So you see where it's hosted? It's on, it's on Twilio. Oh, it's just, so just they, sound. They have a bunch of you know sample MP3s. You can host it yourself too. Hmm. On Drive, um, run, publish, deploy this web app. Do this. So for this example, I'll just use my phone. You guys will just have to kind of listen to it. Um, cool. So I'm just going to have the first number go out. So let's see. So it's going to say start calling. Run on speaker when it comes in. So you're not using the uh, API libraries. You're using the RESTful. That's that's what yeah. Because there's no API libraries here that you can use. You can't well. use external JavaScript libraries at all, right? You can. Um, there's ways you can just copy. Out of, uh, I can show you that in a little bit. Yeah. Call, what's up? Let's see. What do we have here? Let's go to the logs. And what do we have here? Outgoing call. Things that called to outgoing call. Status completed. Why didn't I get the call? I don't know how coverage. Charge to you even though it didn't connect. What's that? It charged you even though it didn't connect. <laughs> is, that, is that the right time? What's that? Is it, was that the right it's time? Yeah, it's not checking the time check right now. Um, let's see here. So what is possible? Is there a typo here? Uh, let's just go with something simple. Um, it's a publisher. Uh, mixed case tags. That's interesting. Try to say manage versions. Save the message. Publish the class. Go down. If they can automate that step, like adding like an extra menu. Yeah, I'll great. show you that. Um, so I go back here. Recall. Nothing called. Joy of Live Demos, right? Um, yeah, I love it. What time was this? It's supposed to be 15. 21. That's just a long time ago. That's, that's one. That's like. It should be 621. It's 4 o'clock. So it's like our time. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't make the call at all to the previous one and this one.
What was that? It just said your trip is canceled today. Three times? The field trip is canceled today, three times. And that's because I have it looped three times. Um, and then you know, I can do something silly like play the cowbell, make it a man, and only say it once, right? And then I'll manage this version, and then hit OK. I think it didn't run because something regrows. It's not called the same thing. Google generated the uh, version. Yeah. No, Tulio generated the sound. So I'll show you, I'll kind of explain what's happening, but I'll do it again. So I'll let it start calling. It's running the script now. So I'd expect it to go now. Okay. And then. Uh, I didn't publish it. That's why. It's uh, okay. There's a new version, an update. But you guys get the idea of what's going on. So now I'll get an example with and then the cowbell. If, if you didn't manually save that new version of the app script, would it have just would it have saved over the previous version? It would save it, but then it still requires me kind of publishing it because otherwise we don't know if you're using if you want to use the library because I could be like editing some code that I'm not ready to publish, mm -hmm. so we don't pick up the current version. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working on ways to make that a little bit more seamless, but it does require two clicks today. That's kind of painful. But what's happening here is that read rows calls the function make phone call, which sends up a request to say, hey, make, you know, initiate a phone call. Then Twilio calls us back and says, wait, well, what's the message I got to say? And then in this do get, we take this HTML, swap in the message we want to save for that selected phone number, which is field trip is canceled today, and then returns back this Twimmel message, which is, Google has nothing to do with this. Twilio just knows what to do with this, right? Twilio then says, okay, in, a, in a American man's voice, for one loop, I have to say field trip is canceled today, and then followed by play, a cowbell mp3 that I have access to. Can you go back to the script and just so I can see how the, the message is pulled from the, the spreadsheet? The do get our. Okay. Yeah, so what I'm doing is that in this call itself, yeah. in the make phone call, I am send, I'm sending it a callback URL that contains the message. Mm -hmm. So that way I don't have to save state. I'm having Twilio send me back the state. So I'm kind of cheating a little bit, right. but it works just as well. Um, and uh, and then you can see that now in the logs, I'll have three new calls in the five. Yeah, there you go. Right. So that shows that I've hooked it up correctly. So I think I was just not hitting the button in the right place or something. Uh, but you can see that this is. You can automate this. You can have it run once a night or hit the button and then make the phone call. Um, but the idea is that you're able to build these sort of robocall solutions with data powered from a spreadsheet or Gmail or Doc or Calendar. Uh, you can have someone be reminded of a phone call or a meeting by a phone call. So every hour, check to see what my next meeting is and then call me. Things like that. So you can write these sort of automation solutions for yourself. And this is the sort of the, the flow chart that I was trying to explain before. I hit a button, script runs, script makes a call to Twilio. Twilio says, okay, what do you want to send? And then I return back. So step four is actually I'm returning back the Twimmel file. And then phone call is made to the person, which I put on speakerphone here. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the, the flow. So I, I showed um, a couple of things here. Let's see, turn on speaker notes. Um, so we talked about uh, phone call integration and then SMS integration. Um, and then we also had SMS that returned something, and then we had SMS that just recorded something. So we kind of saw three different demos that showcase how AppScript could power a lot of delivery services. So, um, all this code is available on my GitHub page. Um, so if you go to um, github.com slash slash Google AppScript. And there's actually a, a video of me doing a lot of these demos on YouTube as well. But if you just go to Twilio here, uh, you'll be able to find a lot of the code uh, that I was talking about. Oh, yeah. Thanks so much. Any other questions? Are you able to access um, the YouTube APIs through the app script?
Yeah, I have a thing for that. Yeah, so you can actually um, do analytics and then um, be able to get YouTube channel event listings and stuff like that. Yeah, if you just go to our playlist, um, so you go to developerlabel.com slash app scripts, app script, I should say. Um, and then at the bottom left, there's a whole section for videos. Mm. And then you scroll down, there's a view all videos. That goes to what's called our Google Apps Script playlist. And then there's a lot of content that I think is worth watching. Yeah. So you have the YouTube integration, and then if you go back a bit, there's a Twilio integration. Uh, we did stuff around Salesforce. So, um, that's me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> cool. There's something like little, you know, just for convenient things that I would use this for. Like very yeah, I think that's, that's kind of where apps. people start. Uh, a lot of it is just like any programming language, right? I don't want to dive into building mission critical stuff. We're just trying to prove it out by building little useful things that you trust us with. And then hopefully it'll you know blossom into something bigger and you can share it. And if you guys write something useful, reach out to me, we'll feature it in our blog. Um, Is there like an app store where people actually sell their scripts? No, not today. There's no store. Uh, mm -hmm. We're working on making a better storefront. You can publish them through the Chrome Web Store. Uh, and also you can put it on a spreadsheet gallery. So if you go to the spreadsheet, there's something called Tools Gallery. And you can publish it this guy. But that's about it. But you can't charge for it at this point. We're working on it. But how did that other other website like? Hmm? And he shows that website oh, like meter. gallery meter. Yes. Yeah, meter. How did yeah, that guy make money? Gmailmeter.com. Yeah. How does that guy make money? I don't know. <laughs> Ask him. It was just Gmail analytics, really, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, maybe he built a useful enough tool that someone gave him a job. I don't know. Quick mm -hmm. question with the. Uh, with, with with, with the whole interface. Um, so you remember when we were making those charts, when you, when you made the chart, right? Um, and I able to embed that in a web page? Yeah, so what you can do is go here and then say file, publish to web. Okay. Um, and that will give you a little thing. It has to be hosted that, with Google, right? Um, that you can then iframe somewhere. iframe? So there's no like scripts uh, that I just made it, but then... Um, Stop publishing all sheets. No, pivot table one. And then let's say pivot table one. Uh, what did I miss? Yeah, this should work, but so it's not right. But mm -hmm. that's the idea. So you can say publish to web. Huh. So it's not right. Yeah. <laughs> Mess with this guy. Uh, that's what's going on. But yeah, you can publish to web it. Yeah, have it. <clears throat> In terms of outreach, obviously you're like a developer advocate and you're out there um, meeting with folks. And what, what other forms of outreach are you guys t trying to take advantage of? Or is it really so we sponsor some hackathons. Um, so we did the, the last weekend, and John was at it, um, Hack for Ed, which is sort of education themed hackathon. Uh -huh. um, last weekend. That was, that was pretty fun. Um, so we do hackathons, we do um, so the, what we call Google Developers Live, so developerlibble.com slash live, which is basically you can dial it live or watch it recorded on, um, and these are all the different product areas to it. Um, and we can, it's all on YouTube as well, but if you go live, you can hang out with us, ask questions and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that's great. And then we do a Google Apps Developer blog as well, so it's a blog, uh, plus community. So about half a different ways we do outreach. What do you um, find to be the most successful, you think? It's, it varies, you know, so sometimes it's coming out and meeting face to face. Yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes, I think the, the, the live program has actually given us a lot of scale. So I did a, a Google Developers Live and I think people from like, I don't know, 30 different countries joined in and you, know, that, you can't travel that much. <laughs> um, and obviously we're a big developer population here in the US, but that's not the end of it. Um, and some of the best developers that are doing a lot of work on AppScript are either Brazil or France and, sure. and, and, all, and all over the world. So the live program is probably, the, probably the, the best bang for the buck, if you measure in that regard. There's something coming out at 10 p.m. Yeah, dial in. That's like Google Hangout, right? 
yeah, these are all, um, you know, if you just go to get them, if you click in, they'll get, uh, if you just kind of stand here, this will play. So if you hit the play button, it'll say like standing by or something. And then at one, in one hour, it will boom update. So there's a bunch of events going on all the time. Yeah, there's all, and then yeah, our events are under the drive track. If you go to live slash drive, you'll see all the, uh, all the things that we do. And the office hours, I'm assuming I can go in and say, hey, I'm having this issue. Can someone help me out? Yeah, please our office hours. That's not right. Uh, but yeah, this should be under here. If you ask you to do it by the time. But uh, that's it, yeah, is that you're able to find these uh, events. So that's like, so. Can you access like a search API through this? Yeah, so someone actually built that last weekend. Uh, they use the, uh, if you go to uh, uh, developers.com slash console. And you want to get search results? And then the app to API access, no, services. Yeah. Search. I guess you just use HTML. Yeah, so you want to use this guy called Custom Search API. And there's no built-in API. You can't just do Gmail app. You know, that, it's not that simple. You have to make a REST call. Okay. But that's how you use it. Yeah, Custom Search API. 100 requests a day. <laughs> that's what you get. Otherwise, I think you pay us. Uh, there's certain things that, are, that do cost money. I'm actually I'm surprised how little it costs money. To be honest with you. Well, the experiment then. You know, yeah, no, the no, business it model. Sense, but I mean, experiment. It's it was released like three or four years ago. Once like they have a ton of people, it's just like you know one one two dollar. That'd be like a yeah. mega bucks you know, for so many people. Yeah, no, it's slick. It's very just convenient. Cool. Was it useful? Yeah, very Excellent. easy. Cool. Good. Yeah, hopefully you learned something new, saw something new. Yeah, that's good. Um, all this code is fully available. Feel free to use it to be good. It's on GitHub. Do you, um, do you mind sharing this uh, PowerPoint? Zach? Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll just remind you. Awesome. All right, thanks again. This is great. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. That was awesome. I'll try to put my on YouTube. Is it okay to put it on YouTube? This video? Yeah. Go for it. All right.